Hey everyone, my name is Robin Lewis. Thanks very much for checking out this video. Getting straight into it, I pulled out these leftover hardwood laminated panels that I had. They are 25 millimeters thick. These are the speakers I'm gonna be using. There's two mid ranges and a woofer. I'm gonna be designing the box roughly around the size that it needs to be for these speakers, but I'm gonna be taking some liberties to get the shape and design that I want. I'll have a link down below to where I got these from. It was an Australian dealer, but this brand is pretty much known around the world. I bought this circular saw maybe a month ago. Having a battery powered circular saw is honestly the best thing ever. The next job is to cut out the two side panels and the top and bottom from these leftover boards. Those are all going to be on 45 degrees. They're going to be nice mitered corners. I'll be using my circular saw, set that to 45 degrees, but I'm going to test that this is exactly 45 on some scrap before cutting these boards. Oh, my hip! certainly isn't my preferred method for making this cut, but I'll get it through the saw and then over to the belt sander to clean up the finish. Set the box up now with the corners in place. And what I'm gonna do next is take some of these band clamps. These are Pony Jorgensen band clamps. I'm gonna set them in place and cinch the whole thing together. The reason for this is to tightly fit this front panel. Six, two, nine, six, two, nine. Right, so squares are gonna be, yes. It's about a three or four mil gap there, and we're a bit long. This is giving me an idea. I wonder if I was to put a bit of an inlay in there, it'd be quite a nice look if I put something light. Some plywood. I've got a nice strip of plywood, which might go on there. Actually scrap both of those ideas. Instead, I'm gonna put clear epoxy around this panel, and then on the inside, I'll put some LED lights, which will glow through. While I'm working on that front panel, I'm gonna get this glue up on the go. One of the questions I think may come up is, what about the expansion and contraction of that front panel, considering it's held within those mitres? Because I'm taking out big chunks for the speakers, the biggest one being 140 millimeters, there's not gonna be that much mass within that front panel to want to move. These storeboard laminated panels are also incredibly stable, so I'm not expecting that much movement anyway. The next morning, the epoxy is dried, and from everything I've read, it should take very little effort to pry this off the melamine. <laughs> that looks amazing. A lot of cleanup, a lot of cleanup. I mean, there's gonna be a lot of sanding just to bring all of this epoxy down. My biggest concern was that there was gonna be chips in the epoxy as it came up, but that hasn't happened at all. And that line looks so good, even if there was no concept of a light behind it. It has been a couple days since I've worked on this project, but I have got two of these boxes built in the meantime. This is gonna be glued inside the main box and then the mid-range speaker will fit inside and there's a top like this to go onto that. This is gonna separate the frequencies of the speaker from the subs. This is one of those moments that every woodworker lives for. The clearance for the speaker to get out is two mil. That was totally by accident. The speaker needs to be ported, so on this side, I'm gonna cut a 50 millimeter hole for it. And I'm gonna be using some PVC pipe for this. The method I'm gonna use is by taking one of these. So this is a 50 millimeter fitting that would attach to the underside of a sink. I'm also gonna need one of these. So this is a threaded to coupling, 50 millimeter. I can now take this piece, screw that onto there. 
and then take a piece of 50 mil pipe and push that onto there and glue that up. I can now drill some holes through this piece so it can get screwed into the box from the inside. And then this is what you're gonna see through the box. I'll paint that black, it'll look pretty neat. This is the amp that I'm going to be using. I'll have the model number on screen. What I need to do now is mount this behind this backboard so that all of these volume knobs poke through. Now this plywood back panel is too thick for me to run these potentiometers through. You'll see if I do that, I'm only going to have a small amount of that potentiometer sticking out the top. So what you do instead is you route out a hole and then you have a thinner piece of plywood or a piece of metal that you glue to this plywood and then this is where all the knobs etc stick out of. I ended up making some adjustments to this plate. I just didn't like the positioning and I wanted to make it a bit more compact. So we're going to have the dials from the amplifier over here, the main power switch over here, that's your power in and then that's your auxiliary in. Flipping this switch will run power to the board, the amplifier, as well as this LM2596, which is going to take the voltage from 24 volts down to 12, so that I can connect to one of these rolls of LED lights. Those are gonna sit on the inside. And then once I'm happy that that's all working, then we can get it all together and into the box. Okay, so 24 in and about six volts out. Now I suspect once I have the amp uh, running as well, that voltage is gonna be a lot less. It's not gonna be 24 going into this unit. Hey, look at that. All right. Too close. All right, you get the idea. And because these mid-range boxes are going to be sealed, I'm going to put in some roof insulation, but it's a pretty good sound absorber, so that'll just keep the, the waves from bouncing around too much inside there. But to be fair, there's hardly any lows that are going to be in these boxes anyway, so it doesn't require a lot of this. Now I can go ahead and start connecting everything from the circuitry up to the speakers. Now unfortunately I've made the sub cable very, very short. So it just works to be able to get this back into the box. If you've made it this far in the video, I'm guessing you're quite interested in this project. So just a couple of things that are worth noting. First off is this app. When you touch any of the volume knobs, there's a what I think is a grounding hum or buzz. I don't know why that's there. If you put on plastic knobs, then the, the buzz goes away. The other thing to bear in mind is I'm not gonna say whether this is a hi-fi level amp. I'm pretty sure it's not considering the price. But for putting it into a speaker system like this, it's more than adequate. It's really loud and the sound quality is pretty good, which I'll show you now. But obviously that doesn't give you a proper indication of how good the audio quality is. You'll just have to take my word for it. But for this type of application, it's, it's pretty good. The LED lights are an interesting one. When I told my father that I was putting LED lights into this, he laughed. The idea of throwing flashing lights into furniture and technology can be seen as a bit kitsch. I really like this application because it's subtle. The other thing is it can add a small amount of drama, particularly when it's dark. And because it's not flashing and different colors, it's just a very nice subtle accent. The only thing I would do differently though, is to make this gap a bit bigger. Because of how thin it is, depending on the angle that you look at, you can 
almost miss the lights entirely. When you're looking at a front on, it's fine, but because it's really thin, it hasn't worked quite how I'd wanted it to. And one other thing to mention is I used a very thick, dense hardwood. If you use something more practical, like a 16 mil MDF, I think you would have a better sound quality because this box does not resonate at all. If I put my hand on the back, on the back panel, I can feel the resonance because it's fairly thin plywood, but the box is nothing. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if that is affecting the audio quality, but that's it. So I'm gonna lift this thing up onto the pantry now and show my neighbors what type of music <laughs> I listen to. Overall, super happy with how this has turned out. So my name is Robin Lewis. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. And if you wanna see more videos like this, I'd like to encourage you to subscribe. So thanks again, take care, and I'll see you guys in the next one.